Hi and welcome back to the Classic MGB channel. Now, today we're at Gaydon Motor Museum for a very special event. It's the MG Centenary. Lots of MGs here, 100 years of the MG. Let's go and see what it's all about. Now, if I told you I'm actually in the middle of an MGB right now, would you believe me? But it is actually true. This car came about at the launch of the MGB GT when it was launched in 1965, October 1965, at the British Motor Show. And they actually took a car off the production line, split it, and then they've made a half car. And it is probably one of the stars of the show here at, uh, at Gaydon. Here we are at the car that started it all, the very first MG. It's called Old Number One, and what a fantastic looking car. Not sure I'd want to drive one on the road anymore, but certainly lovely to look at. And it's fantastic that 100 years later, MG is still going strong. Now, it's fitting that having just seen Old Number One 100 years ago, behind me, and unfortunately we're not allowed to take photos, they're not allowing it, but uh, there are a few already in the press, is the latest Cyberster due out next year. It is electric only, so for those MG aficionados, it's not ever gonna be petrol or diesel, it's always gonna be electric, but still, it looks a stunning car. Now, Gaydon has a main motor museum, and it also has a collection center. This is where we are at the moment. Collection center is basically a massive warehouse of all sorts of British cars, ranging from you know, 1900s right up to almost the present day. In fact, the latest or the very last Honda Civic built in the UK is here as well. But there's also a couple of really interesting MGBs. This one in particular, it's the MGB GT SSV1 and it was designed to illustrate various safety features. And I'm really lucky to have John from the British Motor Museum to talk to me about it. So John, tell me about the car. Well, the car was introduced um, to the Americans to, in response to um, draft ideas on safety legislation prompted by the Ralph Nader book, Unsafe at Any Speed. And basically the Americans put a, a, a draft of all the ideas they'd got and then various manufacturers attended a symposium in America and um, showed what they would do to meet those requirements. Um, one of the biggest problems as far as MG were concerned, as I understand it, was the American proposal to have a rear view mirror with 120 degrees of, of vision of panorama out the back. And that would be fairly easy to do on an American, big American car um, where you just put a big mirror in and a bit of curvature on it and you've got your 120 degrees. But MG did this to say to the Americans, basically, if that's what you insist on, then this is what you'll get, which is basically a periscope. And uh, be all right if he's a, a taxi driver, but not very good as a sales point for the average individual. Um, it's also got other features which are sensible, like um, side impact bars on the doors, seat belts that automatically wrap around you, um, anti-lock brakes, self-leveling suspension, things that we see and, and very often have as standard today but were ideas back in those days. And it's also got a sobriety tester proposal in response to the American idea which was to, um, when you get in the car, you turn on the ignition, a five-digit number, I think it was, flashed up and then disappeared. You then had so many seconds to punch that number in on the keyboard. If you didn't get it right in the time, then the car would shut down for two hours to give you time to sober up. But that assumes that you're drunk. If you've just got a bad memory or shaky fingers or whatever, then tough. You, you still assumed you were drunk and there's not a lot you could do about it for the next few hours. 
But I mean, this car is, to me, is iconic. You know, it's it's got a lot of the features that we just take, as you said, standard in a road car. And then this was what in the sixties, early seventies. It was um, seventy-two, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And um, yeah, a lot of the features we now take as standard features. Others like the periscope, thank goodness, <laughs> didn't get adopted. John, thank you very much. No problem. Take care. Thank you. The British Motor Museum isn't actually just known for road cars. There's also a number of concept cars and other interesting cars, including these, which are MG's land speed record cars. A few years ago now, I think the maximum speed was about 200 and something mile an hour. Uh, so a lot quicker now, but, uh, but a really good exhibition if you get a chance to have a look at them. Now, anybody that's been to a classic car event will probably have seen Sporting Bears. And to tell me a bit more about it, I'm with Alan Moss, who is the chairman. Alan, tell me about the charity. Well, we're a charitable organisation rather than the charity because we've raised money for other charities, totally focused on children's charities. We don't do adult charities, we don't do research, and it's often smaller charities where a small amount will make a big difference. Dream Rides, the idea was simply we'll take someone for a ride in a car, passenger ride, they make a donation, 100% of that donation goes to the charity or charities are supporting at that event. All the drivers, all the helpers, all the supporters pay for their own way, get no expenses, and we rely a lot on people being generous. So things like the gazebo we're sitting under is sponsored for us by a company. I'm very lucky that you've got a very nice MGB and I'm about to go and have a ride and I've paid my well, 20 yes, quid. Uh, we, we should have had an MGB GT V8, a proper one, not a modified one. We've got an MGC, two MGBs here, um, and of course the ZT, which has a Mustang engine in it. Fantastic. Alan, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. It's fantastic work you're doing. Thank you very much. So here we are in this fabulous roadster, and I'm going to ask you to start her up. Here we go. Doesn't that sound great? Wagons roll. This is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's great. It's lovely that you're doing this for, for um, sporting bears. Yeah, it's I, a really good, you know, good cause, I love cars it? and I love having a nice car and it's just nice to be able to give back and just do something with it rather than just sit and look at it. Absolutely, absolutely. And it is a stunning car. So do you take it, do you, I mean, it's obviously a driver, you know, not a daily driver, I guess. No, no, I've got, I've got another MG, which I tend to drive in, you know, more, you know, it's it's a GT, so I tend to drive it when uh, you know it's it's not a sunny. And then my other car is just like a normal sort of family SUV. It's a great sound. I hate it ever. It goes well as well. It's pretty economical as well, which is good. Really, it's fuel injection. Oh, it's injected, of course. Yeah, yeah. So tell me about it. It's got uh, E-type e rear suspension, is that? Uh, it's got E-type e front, e front suspension, XJS okay. rear suspension. It's got the Sierra Cosworth five-speed box on it, so it'll do, you know, 70 miles an hour in second gear easily. Um, and it's pushing out, it's got fuel injection, you know, it's the twin plenum, and it's pushing out north of 350. Wow. As you can hear. It's got to be one of the fastest MGBs on the road, isn't it? I think it's probably one of the best sounding, for sure. Definitely the best sounding, yeah. That's fantastic. It's interesting, I worried when I bought this, I wouldn't like driving my GT, which is completely standard. Yes. But I love still driving the GT because it, it's, this is, it's so different. Yeah. Yeah. So on a sunny day, is it always this one? Yeah. <laughs> I love this car so much, I've gone back to when I was young, you know, when you want to yeah. find an excuse to drive it. Absolutely. Well, I grew up in Abingdon. Oh, really? Yeah, so I lived on the same street as Don Hater. Oh, really? Yeah, I went to college with his daughter. Oh. And uh, he had the only factory MGB Roadster V8. V8 that's right, yeah. And so yeah. I grew up with the guy in my street having that. So oh, my goodness. I totally blame him for why I've got it. Goodness, you're older than you look then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is quite a, a wolf in sheep's clothing as well. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I bought one, I 
definitely want one. So that's it. That's MG Centenary Day at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon. Absolutely fabulous day. Lots of wonderful cars, lots to see. Great day, well worth it. As always, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic because then you'll be notified of lots of new content that we've got coming up. Thanks for watching.